If you're like me, one of your favorite things in the world is taxes. And while there are some people that can say that with a straight face, and I'm very grateful for them, it's just definitely not true about me. Now, Odoo integrates with some great services if you don't want to have to deal with this for yourself, but they can get pretty spendy. So what do we do? Well, thankfully, there's a functionality inside of Odoo that can help us out. And honestly, I look back through my videos and I'm just surprised we haven't talked about it yet. Today, my friends, we are going to talk about fiscal positions. And whether you know what that is just yet or not, I'm going to show you a cool little trick that I figured out just recently that will allow you to import a bunch of fiscal positions at the same time with the correct taxes and everything like that. So let's get into it. So taxes in Odoo. If we come into sales and we go to a product, we go to products, normally the sales tax on a product is going to be set right here in our general information. This is the base sales tax for booking fees, 15%. If we now go to orders and create a new quotation for our good friend Andrew Test, and we put booking fees on it, we're gonna see that the taxes are 15%. No surprises there. But these taxes could be different depending on where our customer is. I mean, that makes sense, right? We get around this issue by using fiscal positions. So let's go ahead and go into accounting, okay? And we're gonna to go to configuration, and then we are going to go to fiscal positions. And you can see we've already got some fun little options here that we could pay for, but we don't want to do that. So we're gonna to go to new, and we're gonna get into this. So each fiscal position needs a name. We are not going to be using the Avatax API for this and we are going to detect automatically. Now, you don't have to detect automatically. There may be some fiscal positions that we want to set on the customer themselves, and that way everything that comes in under that customer automatically flows through this fiscal position. In fact, let's go through that piece just real quick. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and call this tax exempt, something that likely happens for most companies out there, especially if we're selling to another business. Okay, so how fiscal positions work is first off, we can set these on a customer and what is going to happen is we'll be able to replace the taxes on the products that are on the sales orders. So let's illustrate this. Let's come in and say, okay, if 15% is on the product, I want to replace it with a new tax called tax exempt. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create and edit that, make sure it's 0% and then it sales. That all seems great and we're gonna go ahead and save this here. Now, let's go ahead and duplicate this tab. We're going to go into customers and just customers, and we're gonna find our good friend, Andrew Test. We are going to go to sales and purchase, scroll down just a bit and find our fiscal position. I'm going to say that Andrew Test is tax exempt. All right, let's duplicate our tab and play this out again. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna to go to sales, we're gonna do new, go to Andrew test. Okay, the important part here, if we're testing stuff, is to now go to other info and make sure that our fiscal position is tax exempt. This is kind of like automations with the triggers. The first part is making sure that the fiscal position comes through. Then we can make sure that the taxes are correct. So we're gonna to go to order lines and we're gonna do our friend booking fees again. And now you can see, instead of our 15% tax that is actually set on booking fees, because of what we've done here, it's replacing that 15% with tax exempt. Now, the logical question to ask here is if we could add another tax here. So if I could say, okay, if I've got 15% sales on here, we're going to say just another tax. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw that on here and say that this guy is 7.5% and go ahead and save and close. Well, it is going to put in these two taxes, just replacing 15% sales, but you don't have to believe me. We're gonna go ahead and show that real quick. So coming back to this sales order, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it real quick, okay? And then I'm gonna just pull this off, add the product again, go to booking fees, okay? Add that in, and you can see I've got tax exempt and another tax here. So even if I'm only starting with one tax on the product, I can add as many taxes as I need to. So that's a great example of if we have the fiscal position already set on the customer. But what if we wanna detect this fiscal position automatically so that taxes are applied based on certain criteria? Well, that's what we'll go over next. So let's create a new fiscal position. I'm gonna call this 83687, which is the zip code for where I live. 
come visit if you want please don't bomb it and we're going to go to detect automatically okay we're going to set the country to United States and we're going to say this is in Idaho and the zip range is just going to be 83687 to 83687 and let's go ahead and save. So you may wonder why I did the zip range from 83687 to 83687. The reason is because I only want this to apply to one zip code. I don't find that it works terribly well to do a zip range in the States. It just doesn't seem to work terribly well in my experience. Anyway, let's go ahead and test this. So we're gonna go back to Andrew test. We're gonna pull off this fiscal position here, okay? And then we are going to say state is Idaho, Okay, um, 83687 is my zip, United States, great, that's great. We're gonna go ahead and do a new sales order for our Andrew test, okay? And again, we wanna check that this is applying automatically. So we go to other info and you can see my fiscal position is 83687. Now, I didn't do any tax mapping, so I'm gonna do that just real quick. And we're going to say, if it's 15%, we're going to do another tax here. And that's what we're going to have roll through. So we're going to go into our order lines, go to add a product, and we're going to go to booking fees. And you can see another tax came through. So this is working beautifully. So that's great. And I'm sure you understand this a lot better than you did before, which is awesome. But putting in a fiscal position for every zip code sounds like a major pain, right? And where do you even get that information? I mean, that'd be a major pain to try and get for all the zip codes in a state. Well, actually, one of the expensive services that you can get in the states, Avalara, actually provides tables like this for free. So go to the link I provided in the description, and it's gonna take you here. We're gonna come in and we're gonna say, okay, I want this for, let's see. Man, I must be blind. Idaho's somewhere in here, right? So we're gonna scroll down, there it is. And I'm gonna go continue. And then I have to sign up for a little thing. But then what I get is a cool table, which I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, look at this. Isn't this awesome? So I can get a combined rate here. I get a state rate, an estimated county rate, city rate, special rate. And you can see this is all by zip code, which is pretty stinking awesome. So I can take this beauty, massage it a little bit, create a fiscal position by import from all of these, and then apply the tax rates as well so that I don't have to mess with really anything here. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, that's fiscal positions for you. Something that you'll want to know about if you wanna make sure that your taxes are accurate and you don't wanna pay somebody else to mess with that. As always, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below or grab some time on my Calendly. Anyway guys, thanks again for stopping by. Hope to see you again soon.